As adult human beings, we have an incredible amount of things we're responsible for. Sometimes we get so bogged down that the signal from God gets jammed or garbled. How do we manage our responsibilities and still clear a space to receive him? What's up, my EFF? Let me tell you how it is. You're listening to God Jots, a podcast that explores the nature of love, compassion, joy, and the real-life connection between human beings. I'm Ender Bowen. Nashville, Tennessee rock pop artist, author, husband, father, complete dork, and aspiring compassionist. Sit back, relax, and be prepared to laugh, cry, maybe even shake your fist at the moon for some reason. I don't know if you're familiar with Brian Regan, but he's one of my favorite comedians. He's funny, goofy, and clean, so you don't ever really have to worry about watching him with your kids. In fact, my kids think he's hilarious. Of course they do. He's, he's so goofy that sometimes I feel like he's a walking cartoon. I mention him here because he's got this great routine where he talks about the various kinds of greeting cards and how ridiculous they are. You know, like a section in the greeting card aisle called Religious Humorous Happy Birthday for Age 7 Twins from the AFC West. <laughs> Just ridiculous. My favorite part of this routine is where he talks about blank inside cards. The ones that have a picture or something on the front, but when you open it up, there's nothing in there. Like someone's actually making money off of simply providing a blank canvas. Sure, there are tons of things in this world that are sold blank, like printing paper, CDs, hard drives, actual canvas. But greeting cards? Meh. Isn't that just a little weird? Yeah, I know the idea is that you're supposed to write your own thing in them, make them your own, but that's kind of the point where I'm going with this. Because lately... I've been feeling a lot like one of those blank inside cards. As an aspiring entrepreneur who wants to have a large, positive, and lasting effect on the world, but who also has a regular job, a family, a mortgage, and all the responsibilities that come with being an adult, I'm often overwhelmed by all the things I have to do. It's not just the projects I have in front of me, it's the additional stuff like networking, engaging with my EFFs, doing the extra work that helps build this community of little lights, and so on. Now, I'm not complaining in the least. I love doing this stuff. But the thing is, if I'm not smart about how I organize things and plan my schedule, it doesn't take much to bog the whole system down. That doesn't just affect my work, that affects my family, too. Even if you're not an entrepreneur yourself, you've had experiences like this. You've had things come at you, either over time or all at once, that at a certain point you've just felt as if you're barely keeping your head above it. You're lucky if you've gotten through the day and made any kind of a dent at all. I don't have to tell you, that's not fun. To try and navigate through this, what I often try to do is bank a bunch of content and then release it in drips over a longer period of time. If you frequent my social media accounts, you've seen this. You just don't know that you have. Unless something strikes me in the moment, and sometimes it does, nearly all of my social media posts are scheduled way ahead of time so that I can set that project aside and work on something else. My Godjot's work is much the same. I like to sit down, write a bunch of articles and other content, get it scheduled, and let it go so that I have room in my schedule to work on other things or to follow up with readers, or otherwise engage with my community over those pieces of content. Most of the time, that works. This time around, eh, not so much. See, I challenged myself to write enough Godjots articles that I could schedule them out and release them over the course of an entire year. That is, admittedly, a pretty hefty goal. I get that. But that's why I set aside nearly three months to do it. So I cleared out that time, and I sat in front of the computer, waiting for that magic to happen. And I sat. And I sat. For one whole month. Nothing came out. Even with a full slate of topics to write about, nothing came out of me. It was like I had all the promise of those pretty little pictures and designs on the front of the greeting card, but when I opened it up, it was blank inside. I was blank inside. I'm not going to lie. There was quite a bit of panic at this point. I was a whole month in with nothing to show for it, and I only had two months left to not only write the articles I'd expected to write for those two months, 
but I still had to write the ones from the first month that I hadn't even gotten done yet. What the heck was going on? These were supposed to be blogs about God. Where was that guiding force? Where was, where was the inspiration that had always slipped on through? None of that was there. So, of course, I, I had to ask myself, has God abandoned me? Yes, I did ask myself that. I asked God that, too. But the thing is, I knew that wasn't the case. I've always known that he would never abandon me. He never has. If God wasn't the problem, duh, then clearly the problem was me. And I immediately knew why. After all, when I asked God if he had abandoned me, I realized that that was the first thing I'd communicated directly to him in months. Maybe many months. That realization was very strange and incredibly jarring. Like a kind of wake-up call. Apparently I had been so busy with the things I was doing, from the things I chose to do to the things I had a responsibility to do, that I just stopped communicating with God altogether. And worse, I didn't even notice. Sidebar, this is why I don't consider myself an expert. It's no wonder, then, that when I sat down to essentially be a conduit for God's word, I didn't hear anything. Nothing came through. I let so much build up and get in the way that God's signal had been jammed. As adult human beings, we have an incredible amount of things we're responsible for. Sometimes we get so bogged down that the signal from God gets jammed or garbled. Those responsibilities don't go away. We still have to manage them. But how do you do that and still clear a space to receive his signal? I've definitely felt myself get distant from God in the past. It happens. It happens to you too. Again, we're human. In those times... I've always gone back to my tried and true things, rereading some C.S. Lewis, listening to music that puts me in that mode, maybe even, maybe even creating something that's meant just for him and no one else, something I give directly to his glory. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, talking. If you're not even trying to keep those lines of communication open, if you're not doing all you can to clear out some bandwidth for that signal, how in the world do you expect to continue to have that relationship? How do you expect God's word to have any effect at all on your life? If your body, your mind, and your spirit are all aligned to receive God, then you'll receive him as if you're putting in no effort at all. He'll show up. You'll see him. You'll feel him. It's as if it's the most simple and easy thing in the world. When I'm in alignment, when I'm receiving his signal, writing these things is really, really easy. In fact, it's a lot less like I'm writing them and more like he is. I just have to give him and myself that space. All right, now it's your turn. When have you felt like this, and what did you do to get through it? What was your realignment process? How did you feel before and after? And is this the same thing you do every time you get out of alignment, or does it take something different each time? I invite you to share your thoughts with me via email, ender at enderbowen.com, or you can go to enderbowen.com forward slash discord to learn how you can share your thoughts with the growing Ender Bowen community. I would love for you to share your thoughts about this episode with my growing community of aspiring compassionists. Find out how to join us on discord by going to enderbowen.com forward slash discord. Look how easy I made that. If you like this episode, please subscribe to the God Jots podcast on your favorite podcast streaming service. You can also check out more God Jots, as well as subscribe to the mail list for ebooks, updates, and exclusive content at godjots.com. Until next time, be honest with yourself, be truthful with others, give people the opportunity to surprise you. And remember that it's impossible to have absolutely nothing in common with another human being. Be a little light in the world. I'm sure I'll see you soon. <laughs>